Hey everybody, uh, for those of y'all that don't know me, my name is Jeremy Mitchell. I'm the uh, merchandise manager for KPI and a fellow instructor with Battleline Tactical. I like to say instructor in training myself, uh, just because, you know, as an instructor, we're always learning. Plus working with Chris Peranto and Ben Morgan, I'm always picking nuggets to include Benny Glossop and Christopher Donner. I'm always picking up little nuggets from them on uh, their different tactics and techniques in training. Um, so like I said, instructor in training. Um, so real quick, this video is about some uh, tips and tricks that I use here at my own house while training. Uh, a lot of people are not able to get out to the range right now, either because of uh, ammo shortages or you know just work and life tend to get in the way. Um, the, a lot of questions we get uh, out on the range a lot during our courses and everything is of course, um, how to improve things on the strength of your grip, uh, arm strength, and uh, shoulder and back strength, because those tend to be the things that get fatigued the most uh, when you do um, two days of course training like what we do with Battleline Tactical. Um, so to everybody else that's out there, I'm going to kind of give you my little tips and tricks of how I do this at home. Uh, basically, you always want to do everything you can uh, to improve the strength and the techniques. Techniques and tactics are two different things. Tactics is um, things like how would you move from location A to location B, uh, assault in a house, you know, which direction and what, what equipment you would use and stuff like that, that's tactics. Technique is um, how you walk, um, how you hold your weapon, um, you know, when you present that weapon. Uh, it's those little things that you refine to get not only your timing down, but also make it where um, you move move a little smoother and faster and uh, you become a better operator uh, of that um, weapon, but also, uh, you know, partner in the team. Okay, so that's tactics and techniques in a nutshell. All right, so uh, going back to what I was saying, uh, a lot of people talk about fatigue and shoulders and arms and wrists and improving the grip. Um, one of the things I want to touch on right now is how I personally work on my shoulders. Now, uh, getting to a gym and working out in a gym and everything is not something I do all the time, obviously. But um, uh, there, are, if you want to get stronger, the best thing you can do to get stronger is those things like lifting weights, push-ups, uh, sit-ups, arm exercises, back exercises, neck exercises, shoulder exercises, legs, don't skip leg day, um, stuff like that. Um, but what I'm going to teach you is some of those things gonna, that's going to help strengthen your technique, okay? It's one thing to strengthen your arm. It's another thing to strengthen your technique, okay? So first thing I'm going to show you is uh, how I strengthen my shoulders and also how I work on my technique of pushing out to present the weapon and everything. Uh, when I show you this technique, I'm actually going to be starting from the three position and then going out to the four. Okay, so I won't present going from one, two, I'm gonna go from three to four, okay? Now you'll see, you probably already noticed that my hand lines up different. A lot of people hold their hands here, here, and when they come up to the two and then go to the three, they center up, okay? Um, what I like to do, because I'm right eye dominant, right hand dominant, is I'll actually put my hand towards the, uh, and I can't cover up the mic right now, it would be against my chest, but I'd kind of come just right under my right eye, okay? So when I come up, right, and I go to the, I go from two to three, right, it's a little bit shorter of a distance than going to here, right? And when I'm pushing out, I'm pushing out in line with my right eye. So it gives me, it gives me a little more time, or actually, it, you know, brings down that time a little bit of me picking up that sight picture. That's a personal thing for me. Try it, see if it works for you. And now most people, they'll come out, push center, and then they kind of have to adjust from there. So for me doing this, it actually picks up, at length, or um, gives me less time to find that sight picture and get on target. So that's a little technique I like to use. Um, the other thing I did uh, right before I get to talk, talking about strengthening shoulders and everything, another thing I like to do is um, put a laser bullet. Um, I don't know if you ever seen this little bullet set, uh, put the laser uh, on your weapon and some of them when you uh, pull the trigger and the uh, it 
um, hits the uh, bullet, it sends that laser out. There are some that's just a constant laser. What I like to do is the one where it's just a real quick flash of the laser, all right? Now, what I like to do is stand in front of a mirror. Now, my mirror image is double the distance from me than what it would be if I'm standing at a target on a wall, all right? Then I'll pull up, I'll present that weapon, and I'll pull that trigger trying to get my timing. When I first started doing this, I noticed that the laser, whenever I pulled the trigger, would always be to the right, or my left, the right of the target. Uh, so it'd be like shooting myself in the right shoulder, um, or it'd be low and away, all right, from center mass. Um, I kept doing this over and over, and I was like, why am I doing this? Because I was working on my timing, so I was doing it quick. I wasn't doing it slow. And I kept, but when I did it on paper, I was always center mass or close to it. And um, I couldn't figure this out. Then as I studied more about, because uh, one of my primary studies is uh, neuro-linguistics programming, the mind, the brain, how it works, you know, stuff like that. Um, the, I started realizing when my mind or brain saw my image, it loves itself. I mean, everybody cares about themselves and, for the most part, we don't want to create ourselves any harm. So when it came up, the mind automatically twisted the weapon when I was getting ready to fire. All right. So I started slowing it down, picking it up, going a little faster, a little faster, a little faster. Then I finally started shooting myself at center mass. Um, now, if I don't do this every once in a while, if it goes for a long time and I don't do it, I'll find that I'll have to reposition, get my mind reset and do it that way. Um, when I transitioned back to paper, I noticed that I was getting to center mass quicker and faster after doing that. So just another little tip, use the mirror to train, uh, use a laser, um, and, uh, see, see if that helps you out. All right. So, all right, ramble enough real quick. Like I said, I'm going to be starting from the three position. I want you to know this is not my training weapon. This is my actual weapon. There are no rounds in it. It is clear. It is clear and that's why it's going to stay all right no matter what you're doing any kind of cleaning the weapon training the weapon training with the weapon or anything like that if it's an actual weapon that can fire actual rounds then you always want to clear it make sure two or three times if i was to set this down over here on the table and lose visibility of it for a minute when i pick it back up i'm always going to check it again all right just get in that habit all right you always want to check all right so that being said, how to strengthen shoulders, all right? As you can see, I got this band right here around my neck, all right? This is just a regular exercise band with handles. Now, the purple is a different tension. I think it's like five pounds or something. Uh, you can go to your local exercise stores or Walmart and get different, uh, uh, I guess, poundage of, you know, what it would take to pull. Now, I'm gonna step to the side and show you this from the side. I will, you can't see my feet, but my feet are going to be hooking into these handles right here. All right. All right. So my feet are now hooked into the handles of the weapon. All right. I go ahead and get in my natural firing position. All right. I get into my natural firing position, bending the knees, getting comfortable. The upper body is uh, pretty much steady and the lower body is kind of relaxed and ready uh, to move if I need to move and that's a whole other thing about training, but you want to keep that lower body relaxed and ready to move All right Now what I'll do is I will bring this band up Okay, and I will put it over the front of my weapon. All right, just behind the front sight Now the moment you do this you're gonna feel the pressure. All right, so make sure you get your good grip Come up to your three position. All right, and when you push out to the four you're gonna push out and aim at your target or something on the wall, okay? So you wanna to try to get that sight picture, all right? And you wanna push out just like you would when you're doing, when you're shooting on the range and then bring it back slowly, okay? Push out again, then come back, push out again, come back, all right, this is what it looks like from the front. Push out. Pull back. Push out. 
pull back, push out, pull back. All right. Now, when you do that, do it, you know, at least six times more. And after you do it, just take the band off and you'll realize that how light this thing becomes. It is feather light now. All right. If you do this several times a day, um, you'll, of course, it's going to strengthen your arms, your shoulders and the joints and everything. But it also helps you strengthen your grip because that thing is trying to pull this gun out. When we fire a weapon, we're used to it coming like this, okay? When I do that exercise, it's trying to pull it out of my hand this way. So now I'm strengthening all kinds of new muscles in my wrist and in my fingers, all right? Um, so once you do that, you'll notice how light and how easy you can get on target after that, all right? So do at least six, a repetition of six, do at least five of those uh in the morning or in the afternoon whenever you get a chance and just repeat that process whenever you get a chance it's just a simple exercise band loop it around your front of the weapon then just push out like you're getting ready to fire now what i like to do sometimes is because you never know if your right hand's going to go down i like to exercise the left arm too my left arm um, i've got nerve damage in my left arm this is why i started doing my left arm but it's also good to practice getting that grip with your left hand and doing it that way also, just in case you have to, because there may be a day you have to transition going around this wall to going around this wall, all right? Um, you also wanna, when you're actually on the range, uh, of course you're gonna spend more time on what the techniques you're actually gonna be using, but every once in a while get outside your comfort, bo comfort box and start training the opposite side of your body to do the same thing the right side of your, or the um, other side of your body is constantly doing, all right? So that's my band exercises, all right? Like I said, put, hook them on your feet, wrap them around your weapon, and then just push out like you're always going, come back slowly, all right? And maintain that good grip, that good form, that good sight picture, and then come back and do that six times, uh, at least three times a day, and that's, basically strengthen the shoulders. You also, you'll feel it strengthening your elbows and your wrists. And it's, uh, when you're done with it, you'll see how fast and how light this weapon becomes. All right. So that's what I do to strengthen my shoulders. Next, I'm going to sit here and talk to you about grip. All right. Um, one of the things we talk about is making that L with your hand, getting it up in there, seating it real good, working your grip 45, Get it in there, all right? And now that's your good grip, all right? Uh, now, we tell people, a lot of instructors talk about putting pressure on the back of the heels of your hand right here, and they'll tell you do like 40, 20, 68, I don't know what the numbers are. It doesn't matter. Your right hand's gonna do what it's gonna do, and your left hand's gonna do what it's gonna do because it's just natural. All right, the more you strengthen your shoulders, arms, and wrists and everything, it's naturally gonna give whatever strength it's gonna give, all right? So, because this is your primary hand, or this may be, however you shoot. So when you do it, um, when you do this, you gotta imagine your hands, like a, or your fingers like a hinge, okay? So you're holding the weapon, all right? Now, this is the hinge. These, this is what you're trying to put pressure on, kind of like crushing a walnut, all right? Now, if you look closely, you'll see how my wrists are bending. That's not what you want to do. You want to put the pressure in with your arms, like this. So kind of like you're moving your arms and everything in one thing. These become solid and locked, okay? That's how you want to put the pressure in. If you put your pressure in like this, now your wrists become weak, all right? And that's where this movement comes from. So when you do the, when you crush these together, like crushing the walnut, you want to do like this. All right. Not like this, like this. All right. Now, one of the things that I like now, one of the things I like to do is take a tennis ball, put fingers up here. All right. Put it low on the heel of my, or the, yeah, the heels of my palms and then crush. Not like this, but crush. All right, so basically I'm trying to move the palm, the heels of my palm and my elbows at the same time. 
and then hold it, release it slowly, push it in slowly, hold it, and release slowly. And then you can do it like this while watching TV or whatever, but you can also come out and do it like this. All right, this is the best way to do it because this is how you're gonna be doing it with your pistol. So stick your arms out there and do that. Now, one of the things you can do is when you, when you push, put the pressure on the uh, tennis ball, okay? Do it as you go out, do it as you come in, all right? Do it as you go out, do it as you come in, all right? And you will feel that it's gonna start strengthening these muscles. All right, it'll help you with that uh, crushing the thing together or crushing the walnut as we call it. Now, doing that exercise helps us put the right pressure on the back of that pistol or that weapon system. All right, now uh, I'm gonna show you uh, another exercise that we like to do on the range where we test um, that grip. Okay, make sure you're putting the right pressure back here where it goes. The best way to do it is take a pin and both your hands would be uh, put or you know on your weapon, right? And you can have the instructor or friend or somebody else take and put a pin, okay? <clears throat> take and put a pin, right? Inside your grip right there and tell you to hold it, right? As you're holding back here, pushing out, firing your weapon, Come back to three, go back out to four, pull, engage the target, come back, do it like that. This should never fall from your hand during that whole process of your recovery and everything. If it falls out, that means you're lit, you're loosening up back here. Okay. So that's a way to test it and work on it and visually give you a cue of what you're doing. All right. So another thing that people like to do uh, when working on the grip, stress balls, you can squeeze stress balls like that tennis ball or like the tennis ball. You can squish that tennis ball, just making a fist around it and squishing it, all right? Uh, another thing is you can take a ball of clay. Um, you can sit here and mold that ball of clay and we're talking about real hard modeling clay um, and uh, working the clay and doing that. Now, another thing is this is uh, something that guitarists and other uh, people, people who do like trumpets and stuff like that, they'll get this to work on their grip. Now, when I see people do this for pistol grip, they usually stick it in their hand like this, wrap it around like that and start pulling down, all right? So their tips of their fingers, pretty much it's just sitting right here in the center part of your digit, all right? What I like to do is to sit here and put my fingertips on it and then crush down like that, okay? you will see that it gives you a whole different exercise in your fingers, in the back of your hand, and in your wrist, okay? So just using the fingertips. And of course, however many you do with this hand, you do on this hand, all right? Now I have to do this a lot because of the nerve damage in my arm and shoulder, all right? Good stuff. Now, if you need to work your thumb, because when you do this, you can see your thumbs hanging out here doing nothing, right? You can just simply do this. Okay. Ugh, it's hard for me, but you see what I'm saying? Now you'll start strengthening this part of your thumb. Okay, you can do the same thing by squeezing a tennis ball or a soft ball. Not soft ball, but a soft, you know, ball that can be squeezed. One of the things that we like to teach everybody on the range is get off the X, okay? Moving, all right? Sometimes you may have to be shooting while you move. A um, couple of little tricks and techniques about that is anytime you shoot, now you may have to end up shooting a weapon while your foot is off the ground. Um, so every once in a while you can practice that, but you want to get in technique of firing when both feet are on the ground. All right. Now in moving, you always want to make sure that navel up is a steady, steady position. Okay. Um, it's not jerking and shaking and swaying and doing stuff like this, okay? Um, your lower half of your body is supposed to be relaxed, ready to move, ready to shift, however it needs to shift, all right? Um, so uh, what I like to do to work on my technique of keeping my upper body steady 
as my lower body moves is I'll put some things between me and the target. And as I move, all right, I will sit here and I will move my hips around those things, keeping my body steady, okay? Now, one of the little tricks I like to do to work on that is take a nine volt battery, all right? I'll take that nine volt battery, I'll set it on the top of my weapon, all right? I'll present out to the four, all right? And then I'll start to move. But as I'm moving, I'm gonna start moving my hips, but keeping my pistol on target. Now, what that does is you'll start noticing if you're gonna turn your weapon like this, or if it starts moving like this with you, or like this, okay? It's gonna throw the balance of this off. The more you do this, okay, right? The more you do this, you'll start noticing that you can move in any position, okay? Keeping that thing steady, all right? Now, this is just, now of course you're not gonna fire the weapon while the battery's on there, all right? But that just works, that's how you work on your movement. Getting those hips to move while your upper body stays steady, all right? So, kinda like line dancing, you know? Um, but anyways, that's one of the trips, uh, techniques that I like to use to work on uh, studying that position, all right? All right, now one of the other things that I like to do to strengthen my wrist and everything is our wrists are used to doing like this, okay? Because in our everyday lives, okay? Doing like this, all right? The best way to strengthen your hands, of course, is make sure you stretch them out, get a good stretch on them and everything, all right? And I'm gonna work on this technique, this technique, all right? And yes, I'm using a pink thing because this is the wife's, uh, what do you call it, uh, kettlebell. This is technically not a kettlebell, but anyways. So I'll present it out and then do like this. Pull it up, get it as high as I can, let it go down, keep in control of it, don't let it fall. All right, go up slowly, down slowly, up slowly, down slowly, and then do the other hand, holding it out, moving nothing but that wrist. Don't get this elbow going, okay? And just work on that technique, and it'll strengthen up these muscles right here. All right, well, I hope those were uh, helpful techniques. I went through them kind of fast, um, but you can rewind and check them out, of course. Um, Chris, Ben, Christopher Donner, Benny. Um, Benny's actually working on some uh, presentations and training manuals to add to the Battle Line Tactical about combatives. Um, manuals, slide decks, stuff like this is all good for memory triggers and helping you train at home uh, and keeping things fresh in your mind. But there's nothing like actually getting out there and do the physical training with the instructors, okay? So of course, we're gonna encourage you to come to a Battle Line Tactical course because you know um, we want to be a part of your learning experience. But um, if there's nothing going on that month, because we only do courses once a month, all right? So if you're looking for a course to go to, find somebody local, find some of the other ranges that we train at or instructors that we've worked with, or even instructors that you may know and share the love. Go, go give them uh, some time and uh, let them give you some of the knowledge they have. Never sit here and stick with just one instructor. If you do, you're missing out, all right? Like Chris says all the time, you wanna pick up little tools and put them in your toolbox. Um, every instructor has a new way of introducing you something, a new technique, a new tactic, something like that. And he's just going to give you another tool for your toolbox. So go share the love with your fellow instructors. Uh, go share the love with your um, local range. And um, because for the most part, uh, those, those ranges are not cheap uh, to keep running. They got power bill, water bill, other expenses like that. Uh, so what helps them out is returning customers. Um, it, you don't want to be like that guy who gets a gym membership or guy or gal that gets a gym membership and never goes to the gym. All right. Go contact your local range. Find out if that's a range you like. Um, if it's not, find one that you do like and, um, you know, give them your business. Pick, you know, uh, pick the minds of those instructors. Uh, pick the minds of the people that are there. You may see somebody down the line training. You see something they're doing is cool 
and there's a difference between cool and dangerous okay um, tactical is dangerous cool is cool all right anyways uh, share the love with them like I said, we, we much rather you come to Battleline Tactical and let us instruct you because one, we actually learn from our students also. Uh, but uh, like I said, we only do it once a month. So uh, during your training process, go share the love with your local range and local instructors, okay? And let us know about them, all right? Let us know about those local ranges and instructors and uh, see if uh, we can make contact with them and pick their brains on a couple of things. We wanna invite them uh, to come on our social media and web pages and stuff like that so that they can help answer some of the questions that the students are asking chris and ben and benny um, they may see that question and be like oh i got the answer to that so invite fellow instructors on our sites also we look forward to see or uh, having that feedback and those extra eyes and knowledge um, out there to help everybody all right so again, Jeremy Mitchell, Battle on Tactical. We hope to see you at one of our courses coming up in 2021 um, or one of the other events that Chris may be doing um, that's open to the public. But if you have any questions, you can always email us at battlelinetacticalteam, one word, at gmail.com. Or you can email tontos.swag at gmail.com and ask us anything. The phone numbers that you see on all our web pages and social media is a direct line to me. You can text me, call me, um, and we'll try to, if I can't answer your question, then I'll get you in contact with an instructor that can. Uh, Benny's always looking for ways to help people improve. He'll be more than happy to answer some of your questions. Same thing with Ben and um, Christopher and of course, Chris. All right, so yeah, uh, we hope to see y'all. Uh, at one of our courses. And uh, till then, be safe. God bless. Forge ahead.